like stories, here's the best one I know. It starts at the beginning, before too long ago. Something big and wild and strange He hears a gentle whisper in his ear or in his mind His hand is on his pistol and his sanity behind He tells him he can change things in the blink of an eye The voice is there tell you a story today. I'm going to tell you a story because there ain't enough stories and people don't tell them near often enough. So with that in mind, next chance you get to tell a story, tell it. It's time. And this story is about a, a good friend of mine, a um, fellow I met while I was in, in school at, at Berea College. And I met him outside of a outside of a restaurant first, and uh, he stopped me, and he, was, he stopped right in front of where I was sitting, and he said, uh, "He said, what's your name?" I said, "I'm my name's Matt Parsons," and he said, "Nice to meet you, Matt Parsons. My name is Dale from Texas." Man, he left a mark on me. He really did. Just that one moment, but then I spent a lot of time with him after the fact. We used to hang out at the stable down on Shortline Pike and uh, play some shows out there and he'd come to the show and after the show he'd tell me all kinds of great stories. Told me stories about you know how when he was a kid he had a pretty strict dad and his his dad would uh, you know he'd give him some land and, and he he said now I want you to I want you to work this you know five acre plot I want you to get good at it, and whatever money you make off of it, you can keep it and do with it what you want to. I guess he was hoping he would go to school or, or maybe start farming, but he didn't. He said, I want to be a cowboy. He, he took all the money and he, he run off. His dad told him, there ain't no cowboys anymore. 
and it stuck with him and he told me all about it. He told me about how when he was a kid he uh, he got a he got a BB gun and, and he just he took a wild hair and he shot the dog with it when he was just very young. Just to see how the dog would react. Didn't hurt the dog none, but that's just the kind of kid he was. He knocked over this, this cedar tree that uh, that his dad had, had planted, you know, specifically to have it as a as a fence post, trying to cultivate them. And he knocked it over because he, he knew he wasn't supposed to, mostly. And uh, I know those stories really stuck with me. And uh, you know, I, I you know we've talked about it a lot. Um, you know, uh, Billy's met him, and Dad's met him, and. And uh, I told Billy about about this story, you know, him how he was as a kid. And Billy said, "I I gotta write that." So he did, and he's nice enough he lets me sing it. I just stole the keys to the gun. Sting the worst. They say the toddler is the father of the man. Why do I bother then to try and understand? If I'm not anything I wasn't when I wasn't what I If it would make a sound the Needles scattered round Like blood coming up my hair Well I could hear it but does anybody care When will I ever stop pretending life is fair hear everything okay does anything need to be turned up or down jesse needs to be turned up right i thought so i don't know pull that microphone over there closer to you there or get over closer to it one or the other Snuggle up. Kiss if you get up close <laughs> uh, for those of you all who don't know jesse wells he's kind of shy <laughs> he's a shy kind of guy um <laughs> no sure, certainly not um so you know, in the time that I that I knew that I knew Dale, um, and I'm going to talk about him through the whole show. He's he's it's really he's at the core of what's happening here, um, and he had such a profound impact on me. You know, I grew up watching all the great westerns and and uh, you know reading western novels and just being familiar with that way of looking at the world. And man, he knew it. He lived it inside and out. He really did. And so. You know, it means a lot to me to be able to connect with him. Um, so what he told me was that you know he 
he left home and he worked a, a bunch of awful jobs, you know, back and forth, go work at a ranch and work there for a little while and realize he didn't like following orders and then go work somewhere else for a little while, maybe work on an oil rig or something. He worked, went all over the place. Um, and I think that, you know, ultimately just, you know, he really just didn't feel like he fit in. That was a big part of it. He certainly didn't feel like he fit in when when I knew him in Berea. He was he was in Kentucky. He was totally out of his element. He really, all he talked about was going back to Texas. Um, but uh, this, uh, this next song is a song that, that we all had a hand in some way, shape, or form. Um, Jesse just recently. Uh, <laughs> not yet. Not yet. About to. Um, yeah, you sure do. It's a good thing. Somebody needed to be the black hat today. Um, so yeah, this song's called Me and My Black Hat, and it's, it's a lot about, you know, whether or not you fit in in the space you're in. try to overanalyze his life. It was his life, not mine, but I think in a lot of ways he had a hard time dealing with the sort of rejection of not feeling like he fit in, feeling like he belonged to a time that was before, you know, and uh, being out of place because of that. And uh, he did eventually go back to Texas. I, I knew him for a little while and, and became acquainted with him and was fortunate enough to. He came in one day uh, we had a show at the stable, and he, he come in. And just at the very end of the show, 
he shook my hand. He said, it's good to see you. He said, it's good to see you too. And he said, well, I guess I'm just going to wander on back to Texas. And, <laughs> and I didn't think to question it. Yep, he just, he was like that. So I just, I let it go. And he, he went back to Texas, sure enough, sure as the world. And he sent me a bunch of letters. And I got some of them here today. And if y'all indulge me, I'd like to read some of them to you. Uh, I'll try and read them quick. They're a little bit long. Um, and I'll do my best to, to read them in the voice I feel like he sort of intended them to be read in, but uh, he was from Texas, and I'm from West Virginia originally, and there's, there's no reconciling those two facts. So, <laughs> so I want to read this for y'all real quick, uh, a letter that I got from him. All right. Here we go. He says... Uh, uh, my middle name is Sydney. When I was in college, I went by Sydney a lot, so um, that's that's what this he addresses me that way. He said, uh, he said, Sydney, I, I made it back to Texas. Uh, Jack is here too. Jack is his his old old dog. Um, he said uh, he pissed on some feller's pant leg at a gas station in Arkansas. I acted like I was getting on to him, but I gave him a half a sausage biscuit instead. <laughs> Uh, dogs are pretty honest, so I would say the guy deserved it. Dogs can sense things in a man. They know if he's honest or not. If Jack don't like him, I don't care for him either. I'm surprised he never pissed on my leg. I could have been more honest. Maybe I still could be. But some things are like a man's personal effects, and you can only give them out when he dies. I love that. The truth is, there's plenty of riding still going on in Texas. He told me when, that he left Texas because he's following a rodeo and there wasn't no good riding left in Texas. Um, he said, it's good money there, better than Kentucky. But Texas is no kind of place for a man to get pardoned. I can tell you this, though. If you ask for forgiveness, that's an admission of guilt. You're supposed to be protected against that by the government, but it's no surprise they don't hold up their end. When I was about your age, I worked for a lot of... Blank. Mm. There's kids here. They weren't government types, but they might as well have been. Some rich moron from Nebraska buys a fistful of Texas because he thinks he wants to be a cowboy, and it turns out he doesn't even own a buckle. I'm tired of it. I thought maybe I should be farming like Dad wanted or go to school. Maybe there really weren't any cowboys anymore. I reached out to my folks to ask for money, and I got word back saying Dad had died. Daryl was mad at me for not being there. The bank won't loan me any money either. I felt invisible. When my ranching buddy Bobby asked me to work with him and his crew, I didn't really even think about it. They were dressed like cowboys. They said they were cowboys. They said they were going to be famous, and they gave me my first gun. Nobody wanted to mess with me. Nobody. I put it in people's faces just to do it, because that's what outlaws are supposed to do. <laughs> what the boys... This is really interesting part, and I've, I've tried to figure out exactly what, he, what he's trying to say here, but... Um, what the boys I rode with did, it's as much my doing now. I didn't wash my hands of it in the Brazos, and the Kentucky water didn't turn out to be any cleaner. I'm sure you all know what that's about. That's the real reason I went there. Now that I'm finally back, I wonder if there are more cowboys here or less. Jack is hollering to get outside. Write me about the mountains changing color. Sincerely, Dale, in parentheses, from Texas. <laughs> and that's just, it's, it's right good. Now, I understand, you know, he, the part about that that I really sticks with me is that he felt invisible. You know, he felt like he didn't, he didn't have any, any real stake in the world. And that, that's not fair for anybody. And uh, Billy wrote a really great song about it, and he's going to sing it for you. So... Y'all, this is Billy. How do you go? 
this song's called The Nobody, and if you ain't ever been The Nobody before, then you probably just didn't notice. <laughs> kind of speaks for itself through the letter. Um, he, I, he told me a lot of stories Dale did when I when we were hanging out uh, in Berea, but there was a lot of stuff that I think weighed pretty heavily on him that he didn't feel like he could say in person. Uh, so a lot of it ended up being in, in these letters. Some of it I've had to piece together from what I can tell from the letters, but a lot of it he's pretty direct about. You'll see what I mean, right? I, I didn't send him the letter. <laughs> he asked me to send him a letter, and I didn't send him one. And... and so you can kind of you can kind of tell. Um, he said, uh, "Sydney, did I ever tell you about the time I got thrown in jail in San Antonio? I thought they really had me dead to rights. I I presume in that moment he's talking about what you know what involvement he had with these other fellows he talked about in the last letter. Um, I was ready to confess the whole thing." I told him about Bobby and Marcellus Dibney and the whole crew. I told him I thought they did something awful. Then the jailer came up and said, Son, what are you on about? We picked you up for drunk and disorderly. He said I was at the post office 
trying to order a double and telling the poor lady behind the counter that I didn't want any goddamn stamps unless there was whiskey on the back of them. <laughs> Uh, I was still hollering about Oklahoma when they threw me out. I guess I was still a little whiskey worked up. Which I, isn't that great? Whiskey worked up. Um, uh, I thought they got me that time, though. Uh, that's what guilt will do to you. Whatever you done, son, you own up to that stuff. It'll own you. It owned me. Sort of still does. I was breaking horses today. Got thrown around some. It was a fine time. I thought about riding out to the scrub pine this evening and sleeping on the ground. The moon looks like it's sitting on the mesa tonight. Seemed like it would be nice, except for the sleeping on the ground part. I'll look forward to your letter. I still want to hear about the leaves changing. Sincerely, Dale. <coughs> What? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Thank you. Got all kinds of papers here. things my way and now there ain't no going back we robbed a bank in Oklahoma I left two men lying dead headed west to Salt Lake City with a bounty on my Southward for the border. They'll bend for leather, we did right. The Rangers caught us at the Rio Grande. They took some dead and some alive. Well, now I sit in San Antonio with the shackles on my feet. One more day and I'll be gone And my maker I will be Running with the band of outlaws Making sure they heard my name It ain't the money but the glory Cause I'm running my way Gunning my way to fame
um, you know, pretty pretty interesting position for him to be in. What I can gather, from what I, my opinion of what happened in that that previous, and there's a little bit more of it in this one, is that you know something fishy went on, right? You get the sense of that, and that you know he, he put in, you know, gets you know caught for something silly, right? Drunk and disorderly, and was immediately convinced, just instantly so guilt-ridden that there was no way he could be in jail for any other reason than he got in trouble for something. He never says that he like that he played a direct part in anything, which I think is really interesting, but he obviously, he harbored a lot of guilt. And you, I kind of got that sense when I knew him before, but it was the sort of thing that you don't just, you can't just ask anybody about, right? I'm not going to intrude in the dude's life, but, um, but anyway, so here's this next one. Uh, he he uh, writes this one to my buddy Sidney, and I'm presuming that's because he got my letter, <laughs> finally. Right. So he says, right, he says, I got your letter. It wasn't very long. Uh, sounds like the leaves are really turning. I'm starting to ride pretty low in the saddle. Old wounds are aching more than before. Jack must be feeling that way, too. He used to sleep outside the front door. Now he scratches at it until I let him in. He sleeps on the floor, and he doesn't always go out on the fence row with me like he used to. Bless his heart, he must be tired. I know I am. Where did I leave off last time? I think I had just got out of jail. It's funny, I thought I was in a lot of trouble. I guess Dibney had the same idea. We had a good old-fashioned horse chase after the Friday night rodeo in Bandera. If you all don't know, Bandera is the cowboy capital of the world. The SOB shot me. Shot me and left me out there in the middle of the hill country. Bobby and the boys were with him. I guess they couldn't have known that I didn't do any damage. The boys all laughed and congratulated Marcellus on his good aim. Then they took off back to town. Bobby stayed with me. I might could have died if he hadn't been there, but probably not. I feel bad for telling on Bobby. I didn't know he was a stand-up filly. He stayed with me until the bleeding stopped, and he helped me up on my horse, and I ratted him out to save my dumb, drunk rear end. Sometimes I wish I'd just died out there on the plateau. What could be more cowboy than that? Isn't that how it always goes in the movies? The outlaw gets shot, then fade to black, but he's never really dead. I hope you come to Ennis to play sometime. Signed, Dale F. Texas. <laughs> Uh -oh. I have to clarify, the F is, stands for from. <laughs> yeah, if anybody here loves Texas, don't worry. I'm a Texas fan myself. I always say I was the luckiest SOB that was ever not born in Texas. <laughs> everybody born in Texas just that much luckier than me. great song that I, that I dearly love and didn't didn't write um but i love it and it and it really you know it just captured the moment for me I, I when i was trying to put this show together trying to be respectful to dale and and i know he would have loved this you know he was a big fan of my music anyway and and you know was really nice about it to all of us very supportive so uh, so this is called camarado Forty-four. 
saddle roll, come right up. So tickled that Matthew was in school and stayed in school that um, <laughs> he could do very little evil while he was there even though as it turns out he got into quite a lot of it anyway one, uh, one time when I went down to visit him he talked me into going out he used to hang out at this horse stable over on the short line pike where this guy Dale stayed a lot I think he worked there didn't he uh I think that he, I think he worked there not because he's getting paid for it, but because he just wanted to. And I, that's the way it struck me. So anyway, Matthew taught me into coming over there. So I did. I went over and sat and talked to him, and he talked for hours, smoked cigarettes, and just talked, talked, talked. You know how those old fellows will do, kind of like Matthew. Um, but anyway, he told me about uh, I'm a, born <laughs> a two-year period that he spent in Texas where he basically stayed by himself and explored the Brazos River at, previous to it to some major dams that got put in. And he was telling me about the historical sites that he'd seen, some Comanche trails and early pioneer settlements and various things. The, the Good Night Loving Trail, which was part of his story that stuck out to me the most. So I piled all that stuff together that he told me and, and uh, went to the house and wrote this song for Matthew. Give once again. The cats and the buffalo all done gone And I'll be following before long Well saddle me up my old cayuse We'll be loping along Low and loose well, This world for me has got no more use And I reckon it's a reckoning day Feel of a loaded six, and I've seen a good deal of games been fixed. Flat broke, busted, grinned through the pain, laid in the dust, and settled by the rain. Charlie, good night, Odios. I'm headed down the old Brazos. The buffalo all done gone But I'll be following before long Saddle me up my old paint mare I don't know where we'll wind up And I don't 
care Of this old world I've seen more than my share And I reckon it's reckoning in danger My best working days are over for good What's left for me now, it ain't hard to say A few more short hours, then hell the pay Charlie, good night, audios I'm headed down the old Grosso's the cats and the buffalo all done gone But I'll be following before long Well saddle me up my old guy use We'll be loping along Low and loose but This world for me has got no more use And I reckon it's reckoning day This world to me has got no more use, and I reckon it's reckoning in vain. Oh well. Hold on, I've got him a set list here. Alright. Um Alright, before I get on to that next letter. Uh, there's a part of this I want to talk about as it made me think about it. I was in school at the time, and so this is really important to me, and this is just an opportunity to say something about it. I don't know who he needs to hear this right now, but you are not a superhero, and you don't have to be, and there's no reason to expect yourself to be one. Um, and if you've somehow convinced yourself that you are one, hedge your bets. It might turn come around, and you'll have to deal with something difficult in your life and remind you that you're just a mortal person like the rest of us. And I, I kind of had that experience when I was in school, and something that Dale said that made me think about it in a kind of a new way was, he said, you know, there's a skater in it. <laughs> That's good. Um, he left. He left, yeah. Uh, anyway, so so he said, he said, you know, I don't, Lots of kids love superheroes, and they're obsessed with superheroes, and I didn't grow up with that. The thing that I like the most about John Wayne, he said, was that John Wayne is just John Wayne. It doesn't have to be anything else. He's just John Wayne. Um, and so I grew up watching John Wayne movies. It stuck with me. And uh, I wrote a little song about it, uh, and it's called Ordinary Man, and we're going to do it in the key of D. I went through a pretty bad depressive phase when I was in college, and it was, it was about a year after I met Dale. I met Dale, was it sophomore year? Or freshman year? One of the college uh, year. The college year. <laughs> that big, long, uh, quadruple year of college. Yeah. Anyway, I was, in, I, I was a, a junior, and I went through a really bad depressive phase, and, and this song is the result, the direct result of that experience. Um, if you're going through something like that, just remember, it's all right to ask for help. It's all right to not want it if you don't want it and do, deal with it on your own. Some people do that. Um, writing songs is a good way to deal with it, just so you know, in case you didn't know. Some of you already knew that. stranger in my head. I've been in battles that I never would have thought. The better man ever would have fought. It seems I had nothing to prove, but then I know I've quite a lot. Yes, 
I'm not the better man I would have thought. Someone has replaced me, this is not who I am. I never used to bleed before, but now I think I can. I thought I was a superhero, I guess I'm just John Wayne. Six gun in my hand, but it's the tool of an ordinary man. Used to fight off sadness with my fists, but now I'm scared to shoot and kind of hoping that I miss. More than a shot in total bliss And I used to fight off sadness with my fist I guess that tears are just a part of me The Brazos ain't as proud as I should be I thought I was the desert rose Now I think I'm the rising sea I think the tears are just a part of me. Someone has replaced me, this is not who I am. I never used to bleed before, but now it seems I can. I thought I was a superhero, I guess I'm just John Wayne. Pictures to an old tin can. Y'all know what comes next. I'm just a greenhorn, hard up kid with a pop gun and a plan to learn to be an ordinary man. Someone has replaced me. This is not who I am. I never used to bleed before, but now it seems I can. I thought I was a superhero, I guess I'm just John Wayne Sure I've got a six gun in my hand But it's the tool of an ordinary man It's the tool of an ordinary man Like I said, I don't know who needed to hear that, but that's for you. Um. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, okay, so this is a, this is. I, I gotta warn you. This is a little bit. I get a little bit emotional in this next part of the show. Um, I, I feel like that was a huge trans, you know, a, a major part of who I am going through that time period. I mean, college is a transformative time for anybody. But my relationship to Dale and, and the stuff that he told me that I used, I used it while I was in school. It was directly applicable to me. Maybe that's just because I wanted to be a cowboy so bad, and I knew that I was born in West Virginia and I wasn't allowed. <laughs> um, but anyway, so uh, this, is the, this is the last letter um, that I got from Dale. Um, I'm, I'm just going to read it to you. Um, Sid, sometimes called me Sid. I had to put Jack down today. He was getting sad looking, and I didn't think it was fair to wait. His hips went out at the end. I'm mad I never showed him. He would have won. He deserved to win. God is a cruel bastard that way. 
We went out and played a little fetch before I did it. He looked like a pup again. Lacey used to say, Lacey was the girl he followed to, to, to Kentucky, a, a, a really nice young woman that he unfortunately wasn't with for very long, but who he loved dearly. Lacey used to say that when she died, she wanted to be thrown out like a stick. What are they going to do with all of it when I get thrown out? The house, the land, 40 acres almost, my saddle, won't no one ride for me after it's all done. I sure wish you'd come to the house. I don't get out much anymore. If you play a show nearby, you'll have to come pick in the living room. The way we used to do at the stable. Maybe we can play fetch with a line or two. You throw them out, I'll bring them back. Sincerely, Dale. In parentheses. Just Dale. Um, and uh, I wrote, wrote this song. You do too. 
see I do it cause I am a dog and I do as all dogs do. Yeah, I do it cause I am a dog and I do as all dogs do. I'm an old dog and there ain't no way around it. Still got my first bone, I still know where I found it. Um, there's something in that in that last letter um, that uh, I, I got to thinking about a lot. I, I wrote that song and I, I didn't think about it for a long time after that. It it was almost I don't know. I I knew the dog. You know you know when you know a dog and it's just like you don't even have to be friends with the dog. You don't have to love the dog. We had a dog when I was a kid. His name was Max and and he used to jump on me when I got home from school and knock the books out of my hands, and I was always mad about it. I'd smack the, smack the, smack the daylights out of him when he did that. Then he got hit by a car, and for some reason, I, I never liked the dog, but I was so upset about it. I got really terribly upset about it. cried for a long time. I was in middle school. cried for a long time um, because it disrupted my routine, I, I guess. But, you know, when you know a dog... and dog dies it just has an impact on you so I didn't I didn't think about Dale for a little while after that I kind of put that letter down and didn't think about it um, and uh, but then I got to thinking later on about the other half of the letter the second half of the letter and he starts talking about I mean it's clear that you know he put his dog down and he, he, he kind of put himself down in a way you know he, he thinks about it that way in, in the letter um, and uh, so I got to thinking about you know what what does somebody leave behind and Obviously, that's not directly important to me right this second. I'm pretty pretty healthy individual. I don't have I don't own anything. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, it, it you know I, I got to thinking about it and I thought it must be really difficult to wonder what you're going to do. He didn't have any kids, um, and so you know that must be really hard to be at the end of your life and, and feel like you, you don't have a, a legacy in a way. You know he didn't never did the stuff he said he was going to do. Um, so I got I got to think about that, and I thought about it from my dad's perspective. Um, so this song, this next song, is interesting because it's from dad's perspective, but I wrote it, and I don't know if I got it his perspective just right or not. But um, so you'll notice some different characters in it. I'm one of them. Um, Billy's one of them. Our sister Rachel, who's here, she's one of them. She gets mentioned toward the end. You'll you'll hear it when it comes in. Um, and uh, so so in the in the story. I'm kind of exactly like I am in real life, which is to say vaguely emotionally driven, um, uh, like, likely to take off on any wild path whenever it suits me, take off to Portugal for a month for no reason. Um, <laughs> anyway, so that's what, this, that's what this song's getting at. It's called The Saddle Song. For the memories Before I've headed off my final steer And I've been wondering who I should leave my saddle to And now that I've wandered through my younger years And to my boy who always ran a right smart cattle trail he ought to blaze or the one who lost his path but never stopped to ask where to step or who to love or what to say and they ride along the ridge line at hot high noon and they string along the cattle by the light Watching, waiting at the bar 
Cause that's the kind of cowboys they are into his bed he's plagued by loneliness and nagging down and while you may think that the stoic has it easy because he walks with confidence and self-esteem but inside he's come undone over wars he hasn't won his worry is an injury to see. Leave the saddle to their sister after all.
played a gig uh, just outside of Ennis, and, and so I, I felt like we couldn't be there and not at least try to go visit uh, Dale. You know, I, I was excited. He was excited to move to this piece of property. I remember when he, you know, when he found out he was going to get it. You know, he found out that, it, that the deal had gone through, and, and he was just so excited. He told me about how beautiful it was. He'd seen all these pictures of it. He was so excited to get back to Texas. So I was excited to see it. And uh, um, we were all we were all three there. Um, Megan was there too, and and Dad and Megan were hanging out at the hotel. I, I think you'd had I think you'd had a bit much to drink. Don't have to tell. Uh, me. <laughs> sorry, um, but anyway, so Billy and I went out there, and I don't know. I feel like there's nothing I could say that wouldn't. That's not. I feel like it's almost you know not right to say it about him. But I was I was really disappointed. I got out there and not disappointed in him. But just disappointed that the dream that he was hoping to live sort of wasn't what he was hoping it would be. I got out there; the place was growing up with weeds. Um, it kind of, it kind of looked like some rocky soil. Like it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the nicest farmland. I'm sure it was. It was beautiful for him, and it was what he needed. Um, but he was in rough shape, as you probably could tell from that last, from that last song. Sort of inspired by how rough a shape he was in. He was pretty mad, I think. Um, and so Billy and I both wrote songs about that day, about going and, and visiting him, and uh, I don't want to end on a super sad note, so um, I think we're, we're going to do Billy's, Billy's version of events, I think is a little more optimistic. <laughs> That's how I feel about it, too. <laughs> Thank you. 
boys have to grow up, and I never did. And I missed the mark a couple times. Fell from the saddle and got hurt. Seems like everybody's luck holds out for mine. Am I the only cowboy here that don't like rolling in the dirt? in me Cause it takes more to be a cowboy Than leather boots and worn out jeans And I can't stand the thought of riding through the driving snow Why would I put myself through hell if I don't want to go the mark a couple times, fell from the saddle and got hurt, seems like everybody's luck holds out the mind, am I the only cowboy here that don't like rolling in the dirt? I really appreciate y'all uh, listening, sitting and listening to the story. Um, I haven't heard from from Dale, you know, since since I since we went and saw him. He was looking pretty rough at the time. I, I, I regret n not following up, as you probably imagine. But uh, that's why I'm doing this, so that y'all know what Dale was like. And uh, it's a pretty good story in it. You like stories? Here's the best one I know. Starts at the beginning before too long ago. When a cowboy goes out riding loping on the open range, finds himself beside a something big and wild and strange. Pistol 
and his sanity behind. He tells him he can change things in the blink of an eye. The voice is there to guide him like a message from on Jesse Wells on the fiddle, y'all. Well, it used to be that God was just a feeling in your bones. The thing that makes you shiver when you know you're not alone. Like a whisper in the north woods when the wind is winding through. Like a trusted friend, he tells you where to turn and what to do. Give it up for Will Parsons on the Telecaster there. so much. Good night. Appreciate you. Love to talk about, love to talk about cowboys if y'all want to talk about cowboys later. <laughs> I want to thank uh, the Stidham Old Time Gathering and everyone that makes this happen. This is such a fun, fun event to get to come to and we really enjoyed coming last year and we've enjoyed getting to hang out with everybody all day today and we should have come yesterday.